Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders, about to do a couple rehousings. Voice is a little shot because I went to go see Slayer in concert last night with the Monomarth, Lamb of God, and Cannibal Corpse. And between maybe my own screaming and the various vaping and other type smoking things going on around me, my voice is completely trashed. So, not going to do a lot of talking for this one, so that'll mean less of me and more of the spiders. Okay, about to rehouse my Afana Palma Annex. I'm hoping this one's a female, but it's looking pretty leggy, and it's, it's pretty big right now. So if it's a male, it's going to be a pretty good-sized male once it molts out. I got this one as a sling, as a freebie years ago, and I think I've had it for three and a half years now, four, closer to four years. And this was the one that I had originally put in one of the Amac containers, the two and a half by two and a half by four inch ones are around there. And basically what happened was it sat on the top, cowering, didn't dig, didn't burrow. And then I finally went and made a little furrow down the side, poured some water in. So I soaked the bottom layers and it immediately burrowed. So this is something that is a sling will burrow and will appreciate some moisture that seemed to bring the burrowing behavior out of it. It outgrew the burrowing behavior once it hit about two and a half, three inches or so, although it's still used to hide. Now it kind of sits out in the open. It just molten as you can see it's probably pushing about four inches or so now but just a stunning spider it has the reddish hairs on the abdomen and then kind of that tan carapace and the black legs just very very striking spider so we're going to go ahead and try to get this one out it's been pretty as i drop the cardboard it's been pretty laid back overall but we'll see should have taken that out of there first that's a weird... You see it kicking his butt up in there? Yeah. Oh, that came out of the camera. That was odd. Let's see if I can go ahead and just tease it off of this. Nope, kicking. Careful. I was hoping not to get... The kick because the uh, red booty is so nice and we are using a new microphone with this I have a lapel mic so hopefully you guys will be able to hear me better and my voice won't go in and out as Billy moves around because I have noticed that when I wear earphones in the videos so there he or she is I'm gonna try to get a ventral I'll peek at it ventrally uh, I did pull the molt but I don't remember where the heck I put it oh the molt what happened with the molt Oh, that's right. I cleared the mold from the table before I actually checked it. So I will go back to the mold and see if I can see anything. I thought, if I remember correctly, I thought I saw the beginnings of the lady parts, but I wanted to get it under the microscope, and then we moved off the table because we had to eat, and I ended up using the dinner table for spider stuff, and there's no room for food. But these guys do perfectly fine at room temperature. They'd be found in places, obviously, in North America where the temperatures would drop, so that's not an issue. They do not need heat. I've had people ask me about the Afana Palmas and whether or not they should heat them, and absolutely not. They do fine in the 60s. This one's kept in the 70s, low 70s during the wintertime, uh, upper, upper 70s to 80 in the summertime and it's done perfectly fine. So I will add a water dish to this and this will not be its final enclosure. This one here, the original one was one of the breeding boxes. It's an eight by eight. This one's about eight by 12 or so. Gave it a little more depth. So if it does want to burrow a bit or use the hide here, it has some more room to do so because that obviously outgrown the other enclosure. But this one's been a great eater. The growth rate, once I added in the water, once I moistened the substrate and it burrowed, it ate great and grew rather quickly for an Afana Pelma species. So I've been very impressed with that. And obviously it's just stunning. So there we go, Afana Pelma Annex. Annex, I don't know which way to say it. Gorgeous spider. I'm trying to think, did I miss anything on this one? We've been doing a lot of rehousing today, so I feel like I'm repeating myself. For our second rehousing, we're going to do Sued Hapalopus Species Blue. I got a couple of these that were probably just under a half inch or so, and they've been rather unique. When I read about them, they were a species that were supposedly fossorial. I expected some burrowing, and I did get some burrowing. Originally, I had them in a dram bottle this size. I know because it's actually still labeled on the top. I actually just grabbed a random dram bottle and happened to be the one. Uh, it took them quite a while to reach a size where I felt like I needed to rehouse them. I think if I were to start these guys off in anything other than a dram bottle, it would probably be a one of those little soup flay cups. And then I put them into one of these here that's roughly around a quart. And you can see spider carrying along the side now just starting to get right after they molt you can see just a little bit of the blue i don't know if it's going to show up here at all the other one's a little bit more blue in the bum but of course being a blue spider attracts a lot of people now what i found is the slings are not only incredibly skittish 
but mine have not, they, they burrow, they have hides, both of them are set up like this where they have hides and they've done a little burrowing underneath, but normally I find them out and about, and if I try to open up their enclosure to feed them, they tend to try to bolt. Very, uh, something you need to be aware of because I've spoken to a couple people now that have seen the exact same thing. So don't expect them to go to their hides like they normally do. These guys will come out and visit with you. So I'm gonna try to get this one out and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Hmm. Oh, and I grab the crummy cups. I don't know if, if you want to get a little close up before we get in. There it is, with the dog licking in the background, of course. So we're going to go ahead and get this one in here. This is not going to be fun, I don't think. Nope, 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 nope. I don't know why I didn't take the cork bark out beforehand. No, no, no. And that's exactly what I was waiting for. Nope, 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 nope. You go right up in there. Nope, nope, there we go. Nope, nope. Man, cue the Benny Hill music. <laughs> now, before we, oh, wait a minute. Poke and pray. You go, new home. No, oh, go right there. No, no, no. That's that's where you want to go. That's where I want you to go. Hey, right, there we go. Oh, well, hey, that worked. So again, unique. I just did a podcast on these guys, and I think I keep kept re, uh, mispronouncing their name as Sudo. It's Sud Hapalopus. So hopefully, I get it right in this one. But what we have here is some Terra Aranea substrate. I've been using this stuff for everything, and the nice thing is, as a dog clicks in the background, that's wormy. Nice thing is with this stuff, I haven't had any of the knock on wood, that yellow fungus that I've been getting in just about every enclosure that I've used cocoa fiber to are in. I switched from topsoil to cocoa fiber about a year ago and was quickly reminded why I'm not a fan of the stuff. So unfortunately, none of the blues are really showing up in this one here, but they do get this nice powdery blue appearance to it. Eh, you can kind of see a lot of the blue spiders go through that stage. Nope. Not digging that. There we go. A lot of the blue spiders go through a stage where they just start kind of showing the hints of the blue, and that's where these are at now. So I have this one set up. I may set the other one up and give it a little more height just because they seem to be hanging out and about like up on the edges more than any of the other ones I keep, which is kind of odd. Usually you'd expect a fossorial species to be under the ground, stay in the burrow, but they're always up perched right up in the corner in here, both of them, every time I come in in the morning, and they don't really scramble once I come in and start turning on the lights or anything, which I find odd. And I've talked to a couple other people that have seen the same thing. So things you need to be concerned with is the fact that they are usually very skittish and can run and bolt. They are slow growing. Mine eat pretty well. They tend to, they do tend to go into the burrows and seal themselves off when they're in pre-molt. So that's kind of a clue that they're going to be molting. But more often than not, they're out and about. And eating-wise, they eat very well right up to the point they're in pre-malt. Temperatures, as usual, are usually in the 70s, low 70s during the winter, mid to high 70s, sometimes 80, 82 in the summer, but right around there. So growth rate, I think I got these guys just about two years ago, and they've gone from less than half an inch to probably an inch in a quarter or so. So slower growth rate, but there we go. Gorgeous spiders. I do keep the substrate moist at all times. When I originally had them in here, I kept the bottom moist and they did go burrow down to the bottom. When I put them into this one here, they used basically adapted to the hide, went under here, but as you can see, not a lot of burrowing. That's just basically where I had originally made a starter burrow with my finger. So there was no burrowing there whatsoever. The other one, same thing. Made a little hide in here last time he or she molted. She went in here, kind of closed up the top, and then came out when she was ready to eat. But there we go. Sued Hapalopus species blue. Really cool spiders. I've had a couple people tell me they've been picking these guys up because, again, anything with the word blue in the title gets people's interest, especially in the tarantula hobby. So hopefully this will help some people set them up. Obviously, we have a ways to go before they're juveniles or adults, but I will do updates as we go along to show if I've seen any changes in behavior or if the one that I set up, I'm not gonna set up arboreally, but I'm gonna give it a little extra height, see if that uh, stimulates any weird behaviors there. 
All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, two really cool species, and the Annex in particular, a lot of things you read says that they need to be kept dry. That's not the case I found with the sling. If you really want to get some of that burrowing, healthy burrowing behavior, you want to moisten down the lower levels of substrate. Best way to do it is to make a little hole down the side, trickle some water down in so the water goes down through the bottom, and then the spider should gravitate toward that as it seeks the moisture that it needs. So that'll do it for this one. Again, if you've never seen any of my videos before, I usually place them around in here. I never get my hands quite right for this one. If you liked it enough that you'd like to subscribe, very much appreciated. You can click that right up there. I'll stick uh, usually nothing up here, so we'll leave that one blank. Thanks for uh, watching, and as always, I love getting comments. I've been a little behind on them lately, but I do answer every single one of them, and if I don't answer one, call me on it. So that'll do it for this one. Catch you guys next time.